Welcome to 5D BIM. In this short demonstration, we'll show you how Vico Office really takes BIM to the next level, providing us true integration and real value for the construction industry. Using Vico Office, we can combine multiple 3D models from many BIM authoring tools and perform analysis such as clash detection, BIM based takeoff, cost planning, schedule analysis and optimization, and production control. Hope you enjoy it. As we live in a 3D world, most people can appreciate what 2D and 3D are. The fourth dimension is time, the scheduling data, and the fifth dimension is cost, estimating data. At Vico, we integrate all dimensions into one database, and this allows us to see how a change in one of the dimensions affects the others. The process is simple, almost obvious actually, and yet extremely powerful at the same time. If we take this column as an example, we can use the simple geometry to first calculate some very detailed quantities. These quantities can then be used to derive other quantities and or resource demands for each activity. Cost data can be assigned to any level and summarized as a total project cost. And locations are then defined so that we can have quantities by these locations for use as a more accurate schedule input. We use the flow line method as an improvement over Gantt chart methods and this allows us to truly optimize the schedule. Many byproducts come as a result of this integrated process. Firstly, it provides us more frequent releases in the information and more accurate data. And it also provides us live resource graphs, the material demand curves, the 4D simulation, uh, cash flow, and other extremely important data. This demo video is split into three sections. The first being where we take a look at 3D modeling, the takeoff, and cost planning. The second, we review locations and how we use those in planning and optimizing a schedule. And the third is where we explore the 5D outputs. We see the 4D simulation, a 5D cash flow, and also managing change in our data set. So let's start with the cost planning workflow. This is our dashboard. It's where multiple projects can be created and shared in the same database. Vico Office really is just such a simple user interface. There are three parts to it. The first is the workflow panel down the left-hand side, which is a step-by-step -step guide to managing your projects. The next is a flexible view set, user-definable, many different views that you can select here. And the third is a dynamic ribbon along the top that only shows the user what he or she requires for that view. Vico Office has a modular setup. It's designed for gradual company adoption and we can see here the different modules that require either a single user license or a company license to activate. Let's first create a new project on the project server and once that's created we'll go to the manage models view set which is in the left hand workflow panel. Obviously there are no models here yet but let's flick to our BIM tool and see what we can draw. Note that Vico is not a modeling tool and it's also important to note that not all BIMs are created equally. Um, they might not all suit the purposes of 4D and 5D. There are a couple of solutions that you can implement to ensure that you have 4D and 5D ready construction models. One is what you see here. So we pick from the element list and we start to draw our outline of the slab. We then finish our slab and let's take a look at what it looks like in 3D. That, my friends, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> let's publish the uh, slab to Vico Office. Here we can select a project and we can publish the model directly to the Vico Office database. We can then switch back to Vico Office where we see that model appear in the list in the model manager. And the first step in model manager is to activate our new model which will show our slab in the 3D window. There it is. Let's now review the takeoff created automatically when we activate a model. Here is a takeoff item, affectionately known as a toy, T-O-I, takeoff item. And when we select it, we can see the item highlight. For each toy, we have a list of TOX, takeoff quantities, T-O-Qs. You can see highlighting the top surface area shows in the 3D window, the same for the edge surface area. 
The quantities calculated are what we call construction caliber quantities. So rather than just reporting the total object surface area, we're really interested in reporting more useful quantities um, as these tocks show the edge formwork surface area, for example. And these are the true quantities that are really useful for estimators. Here we can find the Vico Office help file. Lots of detailed explanation about the user interface and all of the functionality. And also the quantity data. We can find some very important pictorial representations of the quantity data that's being reported in the TOCS. Now we have a BIM-based quantity takeoff, let's use it to create a cost plan. Cost planner can be used much like an Excel spreadsheet, tabbing between cells and entering data. And along with the flexibility of a spreadsheet interface, we can also use the power of a database to reference information. Here we're using the Vico Knowledge Base, an autocomplete feature to bring in our slab on grade assembly. Selecting the source quantity cell brings up the formula editor and here we can see which TOC is being used to create the quantity for this line item. And pretty accurate there <laughs> to 12 decimal places. We could add a consumption to derive another quantity type. We can add a waste factor and a unit cost in order to generate a total price for that line item. Cost Planner uses a unique n-tiered structure which really allows us to evolve our estimates as more detail becomes available. Our slab assembly here contains the erecting and stripping of formwork, the rebar, concrete, finishing and the vapour barrier. These are all components and can be quantified and priced. When we activate the slab on grade it becomes an assembly and the sum of these activities rolls up to form a new price. We can now see the small blue arrow in the total price column indicating this reduction. Previously the number was $300, now it's $295. The next level can be resource data. Adding more detail allows us to interrogate our higher level assumptions. These assemblies can be refined and mined as a company's proprietary knowledge and reused on future projects. The data is set up in many different industry standard formats, such as Uniformat, Master Format and OmniClass. So that was the cost planning workflow. Let's switch to schedule planning and change the workflow palette to the schedule planner. The first step is to define the physical locations that will be used when carrying out the work on site. For example, floors, zones, phases, change, etc. In floor plan mode we start to sketch the pore zones for our slab. The zones that we draw will virtually split the elements and recalculate quantities per zone. Here we can see each of the zones and we can very easily rename and reorder the zones to complete the location breakdown structure. After splitting quantities by location we can switch to the manage tasks view and start to create our construction tasks. The left hand screen will have three tasks one for rebar, one for formwork and one for concrete and we will associate the assemblies to these tasks. The quantities by location really allow us to calculate durations for each task in each location based on the real amount of work, the applied resource and their productivity. These three tasks can then be viewed in the Gantt chart and if we unroll, we can see the quantities, the durations, and the costs even in each of the locations for each task. We can add logic between tasks in many views. A nice one is the network view, just adding between the three tasks. Unfortunately, just by returning to the Gantt chart, there aren't many obvious optimization opportunities. As we switch to the flow line view, we add the extra dimension of location. Flow line allows planners to rapidly create shorter, more accurate, and less risky schedules, presented in a format which replicates the way our superintendents and subcontractors actually think. The flow line view allows us to optimize the schedule by balancing resources. This creates a harmonious workflow for all trades, which protects against conflicts in the field. 
the optimization process removes roughly 10 to 20 percent of the schedule duration without increasing risk. So we've seen the schedule planning. Let's take a look at the byproducts that our cost and schedule planning process has provided us. Firstly, a more accurate and feasible plan. Also a resource loaded schedule that updates as the plan changes. Endless other useful reports such as concrete demand curves and a cash flow forecast. And let's not forget that the 4D playback also comes for free. So recapping briefly, this integrated process has provided us a BIM based cost plan, a more accurate and optimized and resource loaded schedule, a 4D simulation and a 5D cash flow, all as byproducts of the integrated process. Let's move to the cost planner workflow and take a look at the price currently. We've got $207,000. If we switch to the BIM model again and revise our slab, make it larger, just adjust the edges, and then go to republish that model back to Vico Office. So we're going to publish it on top of the existing model. And then back in the Vico Office model manager, it notifies us that there is a new version and we activate the new version which will update the quantities by location and when we go to the cost plan we'll identify the new price based on the new quantity set at $215,000. It's also pretty important to note that that change ripples through all of the other areas to update the schedule, the resource graphs, the 4D simulation and the cash flow. So instead of having to wait for another takeoff on a new set of drawings, if we set things up correctly, we can just publish the new model and let the software do all of the heavy lifting. Finally, as the project moves to the job site, the team can utilize the Vico Office project controller. This monitors production against the target and allows us to adjust crews as necessary. The engineers or superintendents can add the start and finish dates per location and the production data then runs the forecasting, look-ahead schedules, status reports and even generates earned value analysis data for the project. With location-based quantities, resource-loaded schedules and actual crew productivity rates, the team has enough warning to avoid trade conflicts and cascading delays in the field. In this short Vico Office introduction video, we've followed the life of a slab. We created a 3D model we used a quantity takeoff for evolutionary cost planning. We divided the project into physical locations and used those quantities per location to drive our schedule. We then briefly introduced how those tools are used in the field to control production. One item not covered in the simple model was clash detection. Obviously we only had one element. At Vico we've seen that relations improve significantly when this process is followed. If we first ensure that the building is constructible we can use that virtual model to extract better quantity data. Leveraging that more granular data in the planning and negotiation process is key. And then we can track commitments during the production phase. Through the sharing of data using this more interactive tool and following this process correctly, we can eliminate many of the risks that are inherent in the construction industry's traditional processes. We can develop healthier relationships and your company can win more business as a result. You can see more comprehensive project examples on our website and on the YouTube channel. Please do get in touch for more information on the Vico Office product.